Welcome all to our worship service this morning. It is a privilege and honor for us to be able to come together at a time like this, on a morning like this, and to worship together. We have come to worship at the bidding of the Holy Spirit who calls us all together at this time. So let us worship God with all our hearts, our minds, our souls, our strength, and let us love one another as we are called to love. Let's join with our call to worship as we prepare our hearts. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very word of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Will you stand now as we give praise in song? Hear the word of God as found in Isaiah 11, verse 6 and verses 8 to 9. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The nursing child shall play over the hole, the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy 
on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah's images evoke the time when God's plan has been fulfilled, when all the earth will be at peace, when nature lives in harmony, when there is no more violence, pain, and death, when all creation will rejoice in the childlike trust of God's love. We light these candles as a sign of the coming light of Christ. As God's children, we must trust in God's promise that Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, will illumine all our days until the glorious day of the Lord's coming. pray. God of grace, ever faithful to your promises, the earth rejoices as it looks back to our Savior's birth and waits with longing and hope for his return at the end of time. Prepare our hearts to receive him when he comes, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We turn now to a time of thinking of activities going on in the church and we're going to begin with a minute for mission once again and this morning we have Dr. Charles Borum, Chuck, here to speak for a minute. Yeah, we've got one more chance before the end of the year to squeeze in an activity for missions. Um, we have uh, for several years had, we've got several places where we do participate outside of the borders of the United States, Mexico and Brazil, but one particular place, Haiti, and we've actually sent uh, missionaries uh, from our church and our community there. And uh, once again, uh, we're doing a gumbo uh, a fundraiser. Uh, John Borum is gonna be preparing gumbo and we're gonna sell, uh, I think it's a quart size for $20 and um, you can call the office or uh, I think you, I forget the exact technique of placing your order, but I think calling the office and putting your order in is the way we're gonna do it. And then on the 18th of, sun, uh, Sunday the 18th of this month, we're gonna have the food ready and you just drive through the uh, parking lot at the Fellowship Hall and uh, we'll bring it out to your car. But uh, right now, Haiti, uh, most of this money is probably gonna go to help in Haiti and there's two groups that we support there. One is called God's Promise in Haiti and the other one is a Haiti Outreach Ministry. And I was just talking with Tony Haynes who is from Mississippi but he started, he went with us on several trips and uh, is uh, active in Haiti with an organization that he started called God's Promise in Haiti. Uh, we don't hear much about Haiti in the news but right now the, the whole country is in uh, turmoil, the uh, government has basically failed. They had a, a presidential assassination not too long ago, and the whole country is sort of ruled by uh, gangs. Uh, even the, the people that 
were uh, eking out a day-to-day -day living uh, by selling uh, food at uh, little street vendor sites. Uh, those are all closed down because of gang activity in the neighborhoods. And so uh, people having a hard time even eating. The price of food has gone up to 100%, so it costs twice as much to get food to eat every day. And um, the gasoline, I was talking to Tony, he says the price of gasoline is 60, I said, 16? He said, no, 60 American dollars for a gallon of gasoline in Haiti. And therefore, uh, the, the water wells that are drilled, uh, they get the water out of the well, wells with gasoline-powered uh, pumps. And so uh, there's even shortage of water. So his organization has drilled some water wells, and they're able to buy gasoline and pump the water out, and they give it to the neighborhoods. Uh, they're buying food for the neighborhoods that they operate in. And uh, he says there are about 200 people that are impacted by their operation. So that's a small number, uh, but those 200 people are uh, greatly blessed with this, uh, these benefits. They've had to close their medical um, clinic down. So they're in dire straits, uh, hoping for some sort of a solution. But anyway, in the meantime, we're going to do what we can. And most of this money that we raise will probably go to uh, Haiti. I think with the, uh, the last fundraiser we raised with the men's culinary event, we raised uh, around $3,000 or so. And I know last year with the gumbo uh, fundraiser, we raised about $3,000. So hopefully uh, this will be successful, and I appreciate everyone participating in that. So thank you. Thank you, Chuck. And just coincidentally, uh, yesterday I received a call from Leon de Orleans, and you may, you may remember Leon. He preached in this pulpit about a year ago, and he is in the United States now and not in Haiti, but he has a big church in Haiti, and he um, is a very faithful and brave man. He's been through some difficult times, but he is the one that I most support in my prayers. He has a congregation of hundreds of people who, if they can arrive uh, safely, come still to worship. One day, a couple of years ago, I asked him how things were going. Well, he said, things aren't looking too good. We have had a drop in our, our attendance. And I said, how many are you having now every Sunday? He said, only about 800 <laughs> to have such a problem. <laughs> We do support him with all our hearts and with our prayers especially. Important to remember this week, there is a concert on Tuesday, which I'm really looking forward to. It's going to be um, performed by uh, Vincent on the organ, and um, I'm sure that it's going to be a very wonderful concert. It starts at 12 o'clock on Tuesday, and we will have lunch in Stratton Chapel right after that. So please try to be here. It should be a wonderful uh, middle of the day uh, event for our Advent season. Uh, the uh, Presbyterian Women Coffee is this week also, 10 o'clock in the parlor on Wednesday. Wonderful Wednesday this week is going to feature some of Hattie's great food. She's going to cook a Christmas dinner. She just did a Thanksgiving dinner a few weeks back. So if you can come to eat with us at 515, you don't have to stay after you eat, or you can if you want to. We have a really good group uh, to stay for Bible study usually. But if you come on Wednesday at 515 to eat Christmas dinner, bring a dish of some kind that you like. It can be a salad, a dessert, a vegetable, a meat, whatever, whatever you'd like to bring. Uh, so I'll see you on Wednesday. I hope I'll see many of you. Be sure to look at all the announcements and see what looks good to you to begin to take part in that maybe you are not uh, taking part in at this time. Let us turn now to a time of confession as we prepare uh, to ask God to cleanse our hearts so that we might be ready to receive his holy word. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor together. 
Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been and amend what we are and direct what we shall be. Lead us to delight in your will and to walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. is in a position to judge us, only Christ. And Christ came into the world to save us. He died for us and was raised for us. He reigns in glory for us and he prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old creation is gone and a new one has begun. So know that in Christ on this day, your sins are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Let's stand to give glory to God. those forgiven by Christ, let us not fail to forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you today. You. Greet one another. So glad to see you this morning. Today we're going to talk about someone we've talked about before, but I think it's been a little while. No? We, well, we always talk about Jesus, don't we? Always. Anytime someone asks you a question, if you say, Jesus, then that's the right answer. Okay. <laughs> and so this is someone who was, we think, from another gospel, not Matthew, but from Luke we learn that Jesus is a cousin of this man. And his name is John, but he was called John the Baptist because what he did was baptize a lot of people. And I think not long ago, we may have talked about the baptism of Jesus, which we'll talk about again in a few weeks after Christmas, just a couple of weeks after Christmas. But John was a strange man. He was about really not much older than Jesus. He was born not long before Jesus was born. But he was sent out to live in what we call the wilderness. That would be sort of like in the woods around here where you would not have anybody close by and you would just live off the land. What he would do is catch locusts and he would get honey that was left by the uh, bees in the, in the wild part of the woods 
and he would mix those together and that was his meal. And he was very much like the prophets that lived a long time before him. And he came and he started talking to people and telling them things like, say, tell God that you're sorry for your sins because you want to be saved. But this is the most important thing he said. He said to them because they loved him. They loved to hear him preach. But he said to them, oh, you just wait. I am only here to tell you about someone who's coming after me. Claire, who is that? What's the right answer always? Jesus, yes. <laughs> yes, Jesus is the right answer. So he was coming to tell all the world someone very special is coming. You just wait till he comes. If you think I can tell you something, wait till he comes. And so today we're going to read about John the Baptist, and he was called the Baptist, as I say, because he baptized people in the Jordan River. And he told them to tell God, I'm so sorry about the things I've done. Please forgive me because I want to be on your side, God. And that's what people did, and they loved going out to him, just as they would love hearing everything Jesus had to say to them. So let's have a prayer now about just that. Jesus tells us everything. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, Dear God thank you for today, thank you for today and all the ways that you teach us through the life of Jesus. Thank you for his resurrection from the dead. Thank you for his resurrection from the dead. And thank you for the season that we celebrate. Thank you for the season that we celebrate. As we wait to celebrate his birth. That we celebrate the As we wait to celebrate his birth. Yes. Thank you for giving us all of these lessons. Thank you for giving us all these lessons. And bless us to be your children. And bless us to be your children. We pray in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let us pray. God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out upon us the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that being taught by you in Holy Scripture, our hearts and minds may be opened to know the things that pertain to life and holiness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear, but by righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his loins, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall lie down with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. <clears throat> the nursing of child 
shall play over the whole of the asp, and the winged child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the Lord will be full of the knowledge, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. A reading from Psalms. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May his glory fill the earth. Amen and amen. A reading from Romans. But whatever was written in former days were written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness, steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you stand now for our second hymn? seated. We continue our reading with a reading from Matthew 
Hear the word of the Lord as given to us in our gospel lesson this morning. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees, Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We hear in Isaiah that the family tree has been chopped down once again. That's the story. The family tree made only a stump But it's not dead, it's chopped down to chasten the people who fail to obey God for years and years. God had chosen them to be the light to all the nations of the world and instead they became arrogant and disobedient. But hope is alive in the stump that God let remain and shoots began to poke out from that stump, as we hear in Isaiah. The promise that God made to Abraham and the other patriarchs remains alive. God will not forget the people that he has called to be the people to populate the world and to tell others what it means to worship the one true God. In this prophetic story of the stump, there is for Christians the clear image of the foretelling of the coming of Jesus Christ as Messiah. The one who is in the line of David, son of Jesse, Jesus Christ, the one who will be the new and eternal king. From this root he will come and he will be filled with God's spirit. He will be wise and understanding. He will know the Lord. He will revere the Lord and will be righteous and faithful always. His word will be his weapon, Isaiah prophesies. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. And in his reign, all the world will live in harmony and peace even animals who've been enemies, the predator and the prey, lying down together, living together in friendship and harmony. So why would we today not read that and think, if that's the case, of course that means we too have hope that maybe we can live in harmony with other people that we've never gotten along with, maybe in our own personal lives, But even more so, perhaps the whole world one day can live in that kind of peace. Enemies will rub shoulders and smile at each other and not be enemies any longer. Why would we not see 
that in living as those called to be witnesses to the kingdom proclaimed by Christ, our aim as followers of Christ would be to bring peace on earth and love among all people. We today, yes, we see Jesus Christ as the fulfillment of God's promise of a different kind of king. We believe that the hope announced in the oracle so long ago, and especially the church of Jesus Christ, to be open to new possibilities as God continues to recreate the world as the kingdom that he wants us to become one day. God makes very clear again and again, God loves every person in this world he created. In this second week of Advent, John's message is exactly the right one for us to hear, and people all over the world are reading this same gospel lesson, and they're hearing words proclaimed based on this message. This week, I am most struck about the hope that abounds in the lessons of John the Baptist. In recent days, thinking about those huge crowds that came out following him into the wilderness and longing to hear what he had to say, hoping they too could get in the water there and he would sprinkle it on their heads. They wanted what he was offering them. Hope was something that the ordinary people of that day did not have. They had never had it. They were poor people, and they were taxed way beyond their means. They were not necessarily temple people. They had no hope that people really cared about their spiritual or physical well-being. Repent, John said to them, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Oh, I want to be a part of that. Can you hear them saying that and thinking that? I want to be a part of God's kingdom. And so they came. John stood there at the river in his Old, Old Testament prophet-like clothes and waited for him to come. And they came and he told them, confess your sins and let me sprinkle the water on you. God will make of you a new creation. And yes, he warned them of a, another chopping of the tree. There would be more chopping. The ax is still at the base of the trees, he said. Every tree has an ax there waiting for the tree to be cut down because God doesn't want trees that aren't fruitful. I wonder, as they received this holy sacrament, this baptism, that we still, of course, with great love and great reverence, perform right here in our church? Did they think as we do in a baptism? I'm so glad to be a part of God's family. I'm so glad to see someone new be baptized and become a part of God's family. In the crowd, many did choose to be baptized. Did they think God must really care for us? Otherwise, why would he tell us these things? God really cares for us? This is a man of God we're listening to. This is a prophet. We believe him. And they were right to believe him. John was impatient, though, with those who came out just out of curiosity, and especially the religious leaders. We read that they came out and were casting a cynical eye on what he was doing. They had reason to do that, and John knew right away what they were doing. They didn't come to be spiritually fed, but to interfere with his work to which he had been called. He knew their hearts, and God gave him that knowledge, and he called out exactly what he believed about them. But the ordinary people kept coming. They couldn't hear enough or see enough of John. He didn't brag about who he was, about his position, about being a man of God. He didn't brag that he had a holy place in God's family. He was quick to tell them that he was only the herald. He was only the one coming into the world to tell them about another far more important than he was. 
and they listened, and they were preparing for the beginning of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Jesus, who would come to that very place to be baptized himself in front of many people who might then see, ah, I can tell already what John meant. Someone very important has just come into our life. Still, John preached hope before Jesus came to preach hope. And it was in his hopeful words that many prepared their hearts to receive the Christ who came to preach to them. John preached repentance, but he also preached hope. And that's his message for us today. Look around you. Dig deep into your life. What is it that even on Sundays when we come in here together and we say our confessions together, we ask God to forgive our sins, maybe there's something you haven't given up yet. Pride is very difficult for all of us. That too has to be relinquished to God. Give it over. There can be no pride. We belong to God. We can be proud of that. We belong to God. That's the beautiful message. Repentance is a turning around and we never stop doing it. Every time we do it, God smiles upon us, forgives us, and we are created again to go out into the world to be a messenger of the word. Repentance signals hope as we open our hearts to allow God's transformation of our life into one that is more like the life of Christ. And it does happen over and over again because God wants us always, every day, to be able to exhibit life in his kingdom as best we can. Repentance, like the whole message of the season of Advent, is good news. If God did not care about you, would God require anything, not require anything of you, or would God require something of you? God does care about you, and God does require something of you, that you open your heart, that you receive him into your heart, that you allow God to have his way with your heart, that you turn it over completely to him. That's repentance. Advent is about looking ahead to what's coming, but it's also about looking back and remembering God's plan for our salvation. All of God's creation will be redeemed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that's the hope we hear in John's preaching there in the wilderness. God's plan and God's promise from eternity to gather his creation all people, all animals, all creation, gather them together in his arms and make them new and beautiful and perfect. Now for us, nothing's perfect and life is not always easy. We all know that. We stumble and fall, we go through messy times, frustrations and full-blown fights. We have broken hearts that lead to bitterness disappointments that cause us to lose our hope and we lose a loved one and we are very vulnerable to losing our faith when that happens. We stumble, and we fall, we shatter what make, means the most to God, our very lives. But God is merciful and forgiving and God picks us up, puts us back together again and that is Advent good news. Genuine repentance leading to genuine forgiveness, redemption, that's a promise. And that calls us to live a life filled with hope, the kind of hope that John preaches.
the message of John the Baptist is exactly what we need to hear today as we await the Blessed Redeemer, as we await that second coming, and as we await the joyous opportunity to celebrate the birth of the baby born in that humble circumstance. We await the celebration of his birth. We await his coming again. This is the one on whom we wait today. And we say every day as we think of what it means that we are people of hope. Come, Lord Jesus. And now may all glory, honor, and praise be to our one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together. Father, thank you for giving us ears to hear and eyes to see, the imagination to be in the presence of that messenger, John, who helps us to prepare our hearts today to receive Christ once again. Help us to remember that every day is a new day, and every day is a new day in the life of every Christian as we come before you and ask for new hearts and new eyes to see. Bless us in all we do to try to live out the kingdom promise that you give us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand now and say what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We turn to a time of thanksgiving. Let us bring our offerings, our tithes, and our gifts to the Lord today.
Let us pray together. We thank you for giving us this privilege, O oh God, the privilege of bringing our gifts to you from those gifts that you have blessed us with. Thank you for life itself. Help us to pledge this day to give our very lives to you as we bring gifts. And help us to use these gifts in a way that is according to your, your will for us in this place. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We come with grateful hearts to this table. It is the table of the Lord, and you're invited here for refreshment, for restoration, for that recreation that we thought about in the sermon this morning. This is one of those times when Jesus reaches into our hearts and says, you are mine and I love you. Let us pray together in thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our God, it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. You set us in this world to love and serve you and to live in peace with all you have made. When we became a stubborn people, you spoke to us through prophets who looked for the day when justice would triumph and peace would reign over all the earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the celestial choirs and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You sent him into this world to satisfy the longings of your people for a Savior, to bring freedom to the captives of sin, and to establish justice for the oppressed. He came among us as one of us, taking the lot of the poor, sharing human suffering, remembering your gracious acts in Christ, we take from your creation this bread and cup and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon all of us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Send us out to be the body of Christ in the world, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, to the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Lord, hear us now as we pray the prayer that Christ has given us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took a loaf of bread and sitting with his disciples at supper, he blessed it and gave thanks for it, and then he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, 
This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup and as he poured, said, this is the new covenant poured out and sealed in my blood. Drink this for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the coming of the risen Lord. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. bread of heaven
Christ's blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, the cup of salvation. Let us pray together. Gracious God, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. You have fed us with the bread of life and renewed us for your service. Help us who have shared Christ's body and received his cup to be faithful disciples so that our daily living may be part of the life of your kingdom and our love be your love reaching out into the life of the world. We pray through Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand now for our final hymn. by word and sacrament, go out and serve the Lord and serve in joy. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and always. Amen.